I know it's a little early, but I'm going to go ahead and get started because I actually have a number of announcements. So, um, so before I introduce our performer today, welcome to the Hastings Art Center. I'm Sarah Lockwood. I'm the artistic director and owner of this wonderful place. And uh, we love having our coffee concerts as well as all of our events. Um, we have a school called Blessings Academy of Arts and Music, and we have over 200 students taking lessons in various instruments now. It's grown quite a bit. Um, believe it or not, a lot of it, it grew during the pandemic. So, <laughs> so it's amazing how some of those things turn out for the good. So um, if you um, can take out any device that you might have that might beep or make noise during the performance. It would be great to silence those. And we ask that you just, uh, no recording or photos of any kind. We are recording the concert and it can be enjoyed at a later time as well. Um, and welcome to our on online live stream audience as well. <laughs> They're right there, so everybody say hi. <laughs> um, there are two more coffee concerts in 2022. The first is on November 1st. It's with Ruckus in the Bear Brush, and they are a folk band, uh, bluegrass folk band, so that will be something a little different than what we normally have for coffee concerts. Um, and then November 29th, so right after Thanksgiving, I will be accompanying two trumpet players. They're, they're titling their uh, performance Trumpet Stew. <laughs> so. I'm not sure exactly, you know, we're, we haven't quite rehearsed just yet, but um, I'm looking forward to working with those two gentlemen. It's John Huth and Larry Prescott. Um, there are so many events happening in this month and, and particularly this week. Um, this Friday night, if you all would like to come and listen, we're having our first Friday night jam. And um, it is free to come in and just either participate or sit and listen. Um, Rick Larson is, uh, lives in Hastings and he's a banjo player and he wanted to host a jam. So um, we don't know how many people will come. I said make sure that he brings friends that he can play with in case no one comes. <laughs> so, so not to you know, guilt trip you all into coming, but um, we hope to, to have people come. And it's, it starts at 7 p.m. It'll conclude by 9 p.m. if we've got like 100 people. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Then Saturday, the 15th of October, uh, Sod House Theater is performing um, a play, and it's, I believe it's a sh kind of a Shakespeare um, vibe to it, and um, they, they wrote a play called Rare Diseases, and um, 
they are, it's, it's a free event, although they request that you reserve a spot so they can count how many people are coming. So I believe it starts at 7.30. All this information is, is on our website, and you could also go to Sod House Theater website as well. But it should be a really interesting um, play. So that's Saturday the 15th at 7.30, I think. Um, what else did I need to tell you? Oh yes, um, so the art gallery, the, the current exhibit is Autumn Carolyn and she is a travel agent and a travel blogger and um, she, she also is a photographer. So she really um, enjoys traveling the world and also helping people travel the world and um, that is the current exhibit up, 30 countries in 30 years. And then we will be switching things up for November through mid-January, a new artist by the name of Jason Dom. He grew up in Missouri, and so he is a beautiful, um, he, he uses pencils and um, paintings as well, and he's, he's got woodland creatures and birds and also landscapes. So that'll be up. Um, his reception is November 13th at 5 p.m. It is a Sunday. Prior to Jason's reception, we have our first Sunday matinee concert, um, and that is being performed by Mirage Performing Arts. They came last spring to do a coffee concert. Um, it is a cellist, a pianist, and two dancers. And um, so that's, I'll, I'll make sure to send out an email blast so you all know more about that, but um, we're still working on our ticketing for that. Um, but it is Sunday afternoon, November 13th at 3 p.m. Jason Dom following that with his art reception at 5 p.m. So it's a very full fall. <laughs> so, um, so I need to tell you about this harp over here. We now own this harp right here. So the story that, um, as, as of this August, so um, in May or June, of this year, I got a text from the best man at our wedding. I've known him for many years. And he, he lives in Madison, Wisconsin. And he said, could you all use a harp at the Arts Center? <laughs> and I was like, uh, for free? <laughs> and he said, yes, I have an elderly neighbor that used to play, and she wants the harp to go to a good home. So I said, yes, we'll, we'll take it. If we can't use it, we'll find someone who could use it, something like that. So <laughs> I said, we won't be able to pick it up until we drop our daughter off in August in Milwaukee for college, and then we can get it on the way back. So um, he's like, no problem. I'll let her know. She'll be thrilled. In the meantime, I'm like, what are we going to do with this harp? <laughs> and we didn't know if it needed work done. And um, so I fast forward to early August. I was fortunate enough to play uh, in the pit orchestra for La Boheme by Puccini. And I talked with the harpist that played in that um, with me. And, um, and she, I said, hey, I, I own an art center in Hastings, Minnesota. And um, we just got this harp and we don't know what to do. I showed her pictures I had and, and she said, huh. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa, okay. I thought, oh, she'd just say, well, great. She started brainstorming, and, and she said, I have some ideas for you. So we, we played the production, and I didn't really, we didn't really talk much after that. Um, but she was constantly saying, I think I have some ideas. I think I have some ideas. And then I got an email from her, uh, which copied Amy Nam on. And she said, I talked with a bunch of people. Um, over in the Twin Cities that I know, and by the way, she was from the Twin Cities, I forgot to mention that, this harpist that was, that I had met in Michigan. You know, that's where I was doing this, so sorry, this is a long-winded story. But anyway, this is just to say that all the networking, and I end up connecting with Amy Nam, who's performing today, and this would not have happened had my best man not known this person in Madison. <laughs> What? <laughs> so the music world is, is quite small, and you just never know what's going to happen. So um, it does need some work done on it. So we're, we're deciding what to do about that. 
uh, whether we need to raise funds for it or if it if it needs a little bit of work or a lot of work we don't really know so but it's it's there um, because it's beautiful and um, for you all to see it and um, yeah so Amy is going to come out here shortly um, Amy is going to teach harp here so so Ta-da! You know, it, it, we just got, we, we connected and we, we talked about bringing harp to Hastings. And um, so Amy's super excited. She's not originally from Minnesota. Um, she moved up from Tennessee and kind of is making new roots here. Lives in Invergrove Heights of all places. So really close to Hastings and um, is looking forward to, um, to uh, acquiring new students here in Hastings. So if any of you, she takes all ages, if any of you are interested or if you know anybody that's interested, I'm sure she would be happy to chat with you um, or anybody who would be interested. So um, enough of my talking, so because we wanna hear this, this beautiful performance. So please welcome to the stage, Amy Nam. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you and play for you. To complete the story of Funny Connections, the person who introduced me to the harpist that talked to Sarah wrote the first piece on our program today. <laughs> Thank you. 
titles had colors on them, and uh, Rachel Brandwine has synesthesia, so she sees colors when she hears certain intervals, so that's what the piece was based around. Um, <clears throat> as Sarah introduced me, I am the new harp teacher here. Lessons are going to begin in January. If you or someone you know is interested but not sure, you can go ahead and have um, two sample lessons with me. I'm offering um, two for the price of one, um, beginning anytime. And um, please feel free to talk to me after the program, or if you want to ask questions during the program, that's fine too. I am happy to answer questions at any time about the harp or me or anything else. Um, <clears throat> the next piece on the program is called The Minstrel's Adieu to His Native Land. And at the top of the music, there's a stanza of a poem by Thomas More. And I'd like to read it before I begin. 
When the light of my song is o'er, then take my harp to your ancient hall. Hang it up at that friendly door where weary travelers love to call. Then if some bard who roams forsaken revive its soft notes in passing along, oh, let one thought of its master waken your warmest smile for the child of song.
do on the harp or have a guess. So because the harp has quite a big range, um, there's 47 strings on the harp. It has almost the same range as the piano. The piano has 88 keys. So how does that happen with fewer strings? Well the answer is that each string can have multiple pitches. So, what I mean by that is that these red strings are all the C strings. And when the pedal that controls the C strings is in its highest position, all the C strings are C flats. And I can change the pedal to the C natural position, and I can change it to the C sharp position. So, there's seven pedals, one for each note of the diatonic scale. 
and they're connected to rods that run up through here and then an elaborate mechanism inside the neck that twists these discs that have pins on them and the pins shorten the length of the string. Yep. So it's quite a machine. Um, <laughs> the um, next piece that I'm gonna play for you actually takes advantage of this and uses something called pedal slides. So you can play a note and then change the pedal while it's ringing. And it makes this kind of la sound. And in this piece, it's meant to represent a rocking chair. I'll go ahead and read you the composer's note about Lama Don. Lama Don is a love song that depicts the contemplation of the mother with child. With the ascending and descending patterns of the arpeggios and the grating of the bass strings produced by the action of the pedals, we continuously hear the rocking chair on which the mother is singing. Her words are sometimes soft, sometimes distressful, and at the same time filled with weariness and admiration. You know, those moments shared by a mother and her newborn child. Both end up falling asleep in the softness of the harmonic sounds and in the bliss of belonging to each other. Lamadon was composed for harpist Valerie Milo. The gestation period of this piece saw two births. A little boy was born to a friend and colleague harpist and my own daughter was born, to my surprise, on Christmas Day, the day on which the Virgin Mary gave birth to the Messiah. That is why Lama Dawn is dedicated to Isabel Fortier, her son, Maxim, my daughter, Alfrede, and myself.
questions? It's something that is taught as a part of harp technique, actually. Um, partly because our sound fades away. You know, we're not like a violin where we can keep. So to make a long chord, sometimes we use a little bit of an optical illusion to stretch it out. Yeah. <laughs> and um, having some follow through really does help relax the hand. Um, and getting, getting the hands out of the way of the sound can also help it resonate more. So there are a few reasons, yeah. How does one get started playing the harp? Is this your first your instrument of choice to start with? I started piano when I was six. Mm -hmm. And when I was um, 10, I saw a harp being played at church and I asked my parents, <coughs> if I could play, and I had to beg for about a year before they decided I was serious. And when I was 11 and a half, um, they started renting a small harp for me, and then I graduated up to this instrument. It does. So if you play in the center of the string, you get this nice sound. And if you play down here, it sounds a little bit well, like versus. It sounds a little bit more nasally and kind of guitar-like. And so, um, well, that's what happens up here. Now in the bass range, these strings are so floppy that sometimes you want to play lower to get that more focused sound and so that you're placing your fingers on a part of the string that isn't as wildly vibrating. <laughs> and you can also do that higher, like it, it's you know symmetrical, so you can choose to go a little lower or a little higher. Yeah, good question. Yes. How do you transport your heart? Well. <laughs> I will show you my cart. So, <laughs> you need a dolly, you need an SUV, and you need a husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only halfway joking. <laughs> Hopefully there's someone in your life who has some muscles if you don't, so. <laughs> Um, actually, I can, I can load it into the car by myself. It's just, it's just a little bit of a workout, but yeah, it's, it's, it's doable. <laughs> yes. It gets into a case then? It does. I wrap it up in a snowsuit and <laughs> then I put it on the cart. And how much does it weigh? About 80 pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you get calluses on your fingers? Um, I get blisters if I don't practice consistently. <laughs> and sometimes if I'm just playing really loud music, I get blisters, but you actually try to not let them form into really bad calluses because it affects the tone and it makes it not as nice. Yeah. Is the music written like piano music or like music? It is written a lot like piano music where there's the grand staff with the treble clef and the bass clef. Um, we also have markings for the pedals to remind us when to move them. And um, not all piano music is playable on the harp and vice versa, but it looks very similar. All right, well, one of the things I am privileged to get to do as a harpist is play for people's weddings. And um, this next song, What a Wonderful World, is a request I often get. So I'll share that with you next.
So a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Tennessee and grew up there, as Sarah mentioned. Um, I went to school in Tennessee for an undergrad. And then I did uh, two master's degrees, which is maybe a questionable idea, but um, <laughs> I did a harp performance master's at McGill University in Montreal, and then a composition master's at the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York. And between these two degrees, um, uh, it was kind of a difficult time for me because I was moving around a lot and forming community just to say goodbye again. And um, I tried to write this harp solo piece called Well Again, and I had an idea for a piece that would be kind of about the process of um, becoming well again, whole. And um, I wrote a piece at that time, the summer between my two master's degrees, but I never really liked it. Um, last summer, I decided to revisit it. Um, and I think I was able to rework it into something that is much more able to describe that process because by the time last summer happened, I had moved to Minnesota, established some roots, gotten married, um, made new friends, and started to form a more lasting community. I hope that Minnesota is my home for a long time. Um, so this is well again.
composer, Smetna, who lived in the 19th century. During the 19th century, it was a bit of a rough time for the Czech people. Um, what today we know as the Czech Republic was then a part of Bohemia, which was actually a part of the Habsburg um, Empire. And so Smetna grew up speaking German <laughs> But during his lifetime, there was a big push for um, Czech independence and identity. And um, unfortunately, there was a revolution during his lifetime that was squashed by the monarchy. And it wasn't until World War I that um, the Czechoslovakia was formed. Um, but anyway, he wrote music and he was kind of known as um, his music was associated with this Czech identity and it was, you know, the music of the, the country that people loved. And so this piece is called the Moldau because that's the name of the river that runs through Prague. And I'm sure you'll recognize um, this wonderful melody. It's really fun to play. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Thank you.